just in from purgatory, also known as Atlanta, Georgia. Have you driven in that town? Have you been driven in that town? How does anybody live there? Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was 13, I was still playing with a spirograph. I thought the Bee Gees were high culture. As Mark Twain would say, I thought incest and arson were the same thing. When Christopher Tavernier was 13, he made his debut as the youngest, I just love this, the youngest concert pianist in North Carolina. At the age of 13, performed Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto No. 1 in B-flat minor with the Tar River Philharmonic Orchestra in North Carolina. I was playing with a spirograph when I was 13. I was chasing girls who had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with them. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the, the high honor of meeting this young man. I cannot believe it is so wonderful to see so many people in the audience tonight. I can promise you this. You are in for a fantastic evening. This is the third year that I've had the honor of emceeing this event, and I have witnessed Christopher Tavernier's remarkable growth. Ladies and gentlemen, he is truly one talented young man. For those of us who play the piano, or think we play the piano, after tonight's performance, you'll have to step up your game a lot. Or, if you're like me, you'll just keep tinkering and be happy, knowing you'll never get where Christopher is. Yes, I took piano lessons for years, wasted my parents' money. I thought I was accomplishing something when I played Tchaikovsky. Compared to Christopher, my rendition of anything Tchaikovsky sounded like do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. <laughs> Simply put, very elementary. But what you will hear tonight is a young master at work, a 15-year-old maestro who is turning his dream into a reality. So for all of us, let the dreams begin with act one. Tonight, the stage is set for operatic opulence. Our pianist, Christopher Tavernier and Dr. John Cobb, We'll start the program by presenting a prelude of flavors, weaving together some of, some of Franz Liszt's most beautiful and powerful solo piano pieces. They will alternate in memorable performances of keynote works that made Liszt the most famous pianist in the world, ending with his notorious Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2, arranged exclusively or two pianos. Now, a little something about our pianists. You've already heard some, but yes, I want to repeat some of it, because you can never know too much about these wonderfully talented men. Christopher, now 15, made his debut as a concert pianist in North Carolina at the age of 13 performing Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto No. 1 in B-flat minor with the Tar River Philharmonic Orchestra in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. As we just heard, this year, he was named the first international Prezina artist in the company's 144 years. Remarkable? I definitely think so. Dr. John Cobb, is an international performer and recording artist known for his broad interpretive range and technical command. Dr. Cobb studied with Claudio Aral, whose teacher was a pupil of Liszt. Liszt was a student of Carl Cherney, who was a pupil of Ludwig van Beethoven. Hence, the musical lineage 
actually extends from Ludwig van Beethoven to Christopher Tavernier. Tonight, Dr. Cobb and Christopher continue to perform these concerts that preserve the musical lineage of Franz Liszt. We have a special guest tonight, who by the way is the MC for all of Hendersonville High School football games in Hendersonville. Michael Jones, in the audience, would you like to come up and say a few words? Don't worry, Michael, just kidding. <laughs> Let's welcome Michael and his lovely wife, Cheryl. Michael Jones is also Christopher's ninth grade science teacher. And Michael is here tonight to figure something out. He's gonna figure out the science of how Christopher plays piano octaves at the speed he does. So Michael, please let us know when you figure that one out. It'll solve a puzzle for a lot of us. Um. I've never really believed in reincarnation all that much until lately. This young man is not only a brilliant talent, he is an extraordinary soul. You ever meet someone that's like the, the soul inside is about 5,000 years old? When he walks onto the stage, he and his counterpart, when he walks onto the stage, ladies and gentlemen, the temperature is going to rise in this room. You're going to feel something. I felt it, and I've interviewed a lot of very famous people in my life, um, including a president of the United States, covered presidents of the United States, and there is something transcendent about them, about them all. But this young man, who can barely drive <laughs> legally, is one of those people about whom people in places like this and far beyond will be talking when we are all long gone, generations long gone. I am convinced he is very much cut from that, that mold of Liszt himself. Liszt, who is arguably the greatest pianist in human history, we might be in the presence of a reincarnation here. A few years ago, I had the honor of covering a story about arguably the most famous modern artist in the world, living, anyway. His name was George Pachepsov. Does that ring a bell with anybody? George Pachepsov. George Pachepsov is of Ukrainian lineage. George Pachepsov, when we met him, was selling paintings for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he was nine years old. George Pachepsov, ladies and gentlemen, his father contracted brain cancer, sadly. Both parents were college professors in Ukraine. He'd moved to this country. When Georgie was, and that's what she called him, his mother, God help it, boy. It's going to be a lot of therapy on that. Believe me, my name is George. I get it. When Georgie was two and a half years old, mother was caring for him and his dying father at the same time. His dying father always wanted to be an artist and was terrible. She put some little pieces of eight and a half by 11 inch paper in front of the baby and left him with some magic markers so she could go and care for his father, heartbroken. When she came back, she fully believed someone had broken into the house because what was on one of those sheets of paper made no sense in the context of the age of this child. That first painting, if you want to call it that, that first marking up of a piece of paper, I'll never forget there was a print of it hanging in the family home in Wilmington, North Carolina. Just eight and a half by 11, it sold for $10,000. 
He was two and a half. Now Georgie is at Yale, I believe, on a free ride. And if you want to own one of his paintings, you want to experience that, it's not easy to access. It's certainly very expensive to own. Now think about this moment. This young man is going to come out here and he is going to color the air. He is going to color the air with a gift times 10 times 10. Because he will sit at that piano and he will play. And he will address this crowd. And in his bearing, there will be something, there will be something truly transcendent. Truly. I don't believe he's ever seen an episode of the Flintstones in his life. When I was 13, yeah, when I was 16, I was watching the Flintstones. When I was 13, I could play exactly one and a half songs on a guitar. And here we are, Grace, with this extraordinary young man. And when I met him, by the way, and he's going to be embarrassed by this, and I conclude with this, as I introduce Dr. John Cobb and Christopher Tavernier, I said, it's going to be very much like a Van Halen show. You are Eddie Van Halen. I am Diamond David Lee Roth, baby. <laughs> the only talent I have comes through my mouth. The floor is yours. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome our performing artists, Christopher Tavernier and Dr. John Cobb.